Section 13.2, integral of vector functions and projectile motion. So by the end of the section, you should be able to find antiderivatives and integrals for vector functions. You should be able to apply this to answering questions about projectile motion. So the first question I, I want to think about, just what is an antiderivative? And so in calculus, you know, the tail end of calculus when we learn antiderivatives, it's a you know, f of x is an antiderivative of little f of x if f prime of x is equal to f of x. And if we want to not use the prime, we can say d big F dx is equal to little f of x. And our notation for this, of course, is is that how do we find antiderivatives? How do we get them? You know, the, the indefinite integral of our little function, uh, little f of x dx, is big F of x plus a constant. So now, when we're dealing with vector value functions, we have the exact, exactly the same concept of uh, antiderivatives. So what does it mean for something to be an antiderivative, so big R of T is an antiderivative of little r of T if the, the derivative of big R with respect to T is little r of T. And of course this has to work for, you know, every point in your, in, in the interval, every all allowable uh, t values for your function here. And so in practice, yeah, but let's just go ahead to the definition here. What is the indefinite integral of, a, of our uh, vector valued function r with respect to t? The set of all antiderivatives. Of course, in general, our vector functions can have more than one antiderivative. They'll have an infinitely many antiderivatives, just like in Calc 1, denoted by you know, integral sine r of t dt, and if big R is any antiderivative of little r, then the antiderivative of little r dt is big R of t plus c, where this is a constant vector. So what, what's going on here with the constant vector is that like c is equal to like c1 i hat plus c2 j hat plus c3 k hat, where c1, c2, and c3, these all can be different constants, but they have to be constants as in there's no t dependence for them. So uh, let's just do an example here. Um, let's find uh, indefinite integral for uh, cosine t i hat plus j hat minus 2t k hat dt. How do we do this? We simply integrate each component separately. So the antiderivative for cosine t is sine t. Antiderivative for one here, one times j hat, and antiderivative for one is t. Antiderivative for negative 2t Oops, uh, t times j hat. And the antiderivative of negative 2t k hat would be t squared k hat. And then what we should do is tack on our constant vector here. So this, this looks like a single constant, but there's one constant in there for each one of these terms. If you want to write it out more explicitly, you could alternatively write this as sine of t plus c1 i hat plus t plus c2 j hat uh, plus negative t squared plus c3 k hat. So if you can integrate it from calculus one and calculus two, you know, integrating right here is nothing more than just doing three separate integrals and making sure you take care of the constants appropriately. 
Um, after we do definite, in, sorry, indefinite integrals, here's indefinite integral, we also need to have definite integrals here. So if the individual components of your vector function are integral over the interval from A to B, then we say that R, the vector function, is also integrable. And the definite integral of R from A to B is what you do is you once again just integrate each of the components separately. So the first component of R of t is f of t, and this definite integral from a to b dt, and you take that answer and multiply it by i hat, and then okay, our next component uh, for j hat, g of t, integrate that from a to b dt, and multiply that times j hat, plus the integral from a to b of h of t dt, find that definite integral, multiply that by k hat. So how do we do definite integrals? You just you know, integrate each one of the components here separately, and it should be pretty straightforward. So example here, find the definite integral from zero to pi of cosine t i hat plus j hat minus two t k hat. So what do we what do we do here? So we're going to integrate from zero to pi cosine t dt and multiply that by i hat plus the integral from zero to pi of one dt, multiply that by j hat. Let me make it a little bit more j like there we go. Uh, plus the integral from zero pi of negative two t dt and multiply that by k hat. So at the end of the day, what are we left with? Okay, integral of uh, cosine t, antiderivative of cosine t would be uh, sine t, plug in zero to pi, multiply that by i hat when we're done, then the antiderivative, well, the, the, the uh, definite integral, I should say, of one from zero pi, we know that's just going to be pi times j hat. This would be negative uh, t squared plug in zero to pi times k hat. And what are we left with? Uh, sine of t, Sine of pi would be zero, sine of zero would be zero i hat, looks like that's going to be zero, plus pi j hat minus pi squared k hat. So pi j hat minus pi squared k hat would be our final answer here. So once again, if you can do definite integrals from calculus one and calculus two, just do three definite integrals in a row in this type of problem, and you're all done.